What's up guys? Welcome to a, a water episode. Finally. It's the only water we get here in the desert. We're at one of my favorite places. About an hour from my house. The catwalk, southern New Mexico. So I've got uh, we're here today because Freewell sent me some really cool accessories for the phone. And uh, I needed any excuse possible to get in the water because it's 100 degrees right now. So before we go any further, this video is sponsored. So thank you, Freewell, for sending me this stuff. Um, I really appreciate it. I have been using Freewell filters for a long time for my cameras and my drones and stuff like that. I bought a lot of their stuff. So it, when they reached out to me, I was very excited uh, to work with them because it's, it's a company that I, that I trust pretty decently. So let me show you what we got. Obviously, this is like the hardest time of day to photograph. Hold on, I'm gonna have to take this mic off because it's on my bag. All right, so this is like, you know, the worst time of day to, to photograph because like, how do you get how do you get waterfalls like that nice and silky smooth in the daytime? Well, the answer is you need filters. And you know, the biggest problem that I've been having uh, since I got the S23 Ultra is, and the S22 actually, I used to use the Moment filters and they don't make it. Uh, hold on, camera lady's hat just blew away. Saved it. <laughs> Tie that thing down, camera lady. <laughs> she doesn't like the neck strappy thing. Freaks her out. Anyway, so, um, you know, I used to use the, the Moment filters back in the day for the Moment lenses, and then they made their cases that went on the S21 was the last one they did it on. But since then, I just, there haven't been any good filters for the Samsung phones. They kind of, everybody just kind of been dealing with the iPhones and um, I just, I feel really bummed. But now I'm so stoked that Freewell, they keep the awesome little case too. Um, they sent me a lot of stuff. We're gonna go over some of the other stuff that I I'm, I'm, might use. But this right here, this is beautiful. So they also sent me, um, where's my phone? Somebody, oh, there it is. So they also sent me this case, and it's a MagSafe case, which is cool. Goes a lot, uh, I have a lot of accessories for MagSafe, which is great. But most importantly, these filters, let's get one out here. These filters are magnetic. Look at that. Look how easy that was to just clip right on. And I love the size of this thing. Look at that. That's huge. Can you even see? Yeah. <laughs> so, I love two things. I love the ease of use. I love the size that this one filter covers all of the lenses and there's no vignetting, there's no issues. We're gonna double check that. And I'm trusting that the quality on these is just as good as the DSLR mirrorless and drone filters that I have from Freewell. So let's get this set up and I'm gonna try, this is a really cool area. I'm gonna try to get a couple of, uh, I'm gonna try to utilize all the different lenses on here to get, I mean, we've got these massive sweeping canyons, we've got the waterfalls. So I'm gonna try to get it all from super wide down to some telephoto waterfall shots. I'm gonna go in this cave over here that I was just checking out on the way in. And I think we can get some really cool photos out here. So let's see what these filters can do. It's also really nice to come out on a day like this where it's super hot and not have to carry a lot of camera gear. I've got a little tiny bag, um, I've got just, the minimal phone gear, water, and food, and that's it. And it's, I can't tell you how good that feels to me. Yeah, rub it in camera lady's face, thank you. Rub it in camera lady's face because she's carrying all of the actual camera gear at this time. <laughs> uh, so definitely um, tell camera lady how much you guys love her and her B-roll in the comments because we appreciate it. She's working really hard. Oh, they gave me this thing too. Um, this is like a Bluetooth handle thing, and it's Arca Swiss compatible, which is great because the tripod that I brought is Arca Swiss. So let's get that set up, and then we'll go from there. So we got the phone here. What I'm worried about, though, is it's super bright out here. This ND64 is all they, is the highest they gave me, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on because I know I'm going to need it. But I don't know. It, I don't think these are stackable, though. I, 32, I don't know. Let's... 
<gasps> oh, heck yeah, they are. Oh, that's like backwards. Oh, look at that. <gasps> oh, they're stackable. Oh, that's so cool. And they're labeled right there. You got 64, 32. Oh, wow. Okay. We can make this happen. All right, let's get this on the tripod and get this set up. All right, let's put this thingy on here. So uh, we got the phone, let's switch it this way. And I'll have the bottom like this. This thing is, look at the Arca Swiss here. That is like, that's nice. That's really stiff for the spring, which is good though, because uh, that's not gonna go anywhere. All right, check that out. Look at this. That's like a full on actual grip. Like that would be really good for video too. If you're, oh man, all right, let's get, Let's get this on a tripod. All right, so I've got my handy dandy travel tripod here. This is the Ulanzi Coleman uh, Zero Y. This thing, it's a bit expensive if you're just doing cell phone stuff, but obviously I don't do just cell phone stuff. But this thing is the best travel tripod I've ever had. It's amazing. And it's so light and like compact. It's just super easy for when I wanna not die while carrying lots of things. If I gotta be out here in the sun, I might as well be in the water. It's 100 degrees out, so this water feels really good. All right, so let's get this, let's get this on here. Okay, so Arca Swiss. Oh yeah, look at that, right in there, cool. And then if I need to go vertical, there we are. I am gonna do vertical first because we've got some amazing cliffs and I wanna get them. So let's get the, uh, let's get the screen recorder going here for you guys. All right, so we're gonna open up our camera I'm gonna go into pro mode, but we wanna go ISO as low as possible. So 50 there. We wanna go shutter speed. I want it at least a quarter of a second. And look at that, look how bright we are. This is where stacking is gonna come into play. So, I'm gonna bust out my handy. I really like this case. This is so well made. Like this is definitely the, the nicest filter case, especially for phone stuff. All right, I'm gonna add this 32 because that's the next strongest thing I have. Even though you can stack, you be careful when you stack. The more, you, the more you stack, obviously, the more you're shooting through, that becomes a little trickier. It softens the image, it, you know, it can create more vignetting. So we are worried about that a little bit. You know, it would help if I put, the I, I had it upside down and it was covering the lens i had the the because i'm a genius i'm like now i hey, now i can see stuff okay so it says plus two on the ev so we're over so i'm going to bring that back down all right so two seconds is showing accurate i i don't know if i believe that but we'll see i've got good news and bad news the good news is it worked beautifully the bad news is the sun has moved just so that the waterfall is in the shade now and this composition doesn't really work. Let's try this. Oh, go cloudy, go cloudy. You know what, this is an eighth of a second. Let's see if that works. So there's a new feature on here. I haven't made a video about it yet, but it's in the pro, the pro, uh, the expert raw, check this out. So if we go up here to more and go into expert raw, if we come in and click this guy here, these little uh, overlapping square thingies. We go to shutter continuous. We click on average, and we're gonna bring the exposure up to nine. This is gonna do what I do in Photoshop. This is what we do when we don't have filters or we don't have long enough exposure. We use a median average to blend them together in Photoshop. Well, this is doing it in the camera now. So I wanna compare that to a long exposure and see how good that works. All right, so there we are. So it did work. All right, I can't see anything, so we're gonna look at that back uh, when we get home, back on the computer. 
and I'll edit those. I'm also gonna go ahead and put that in the 50 because why not, right? Let's go with the wide. Oh look, not available in current picture size. So you can only do it in the 12 megapixel. Very interesting to note. Oh my God, it's so much nicer in here. All right, so now I wanna to try to get this because the good thing about us being in here is that it's a lot darker, which means we can get a lot longer of an exposure. This is actually a great opportunity to let's, I think we could get away with something. I'm gonna try to check this out. So they also sent me a circular polarizer. So what's unfortunate about this system is that you can't put the ND and the circular polarizer together because they're shaped different. Let me just show you what I'm talking about and uh, get that out. So we can pause for a second. So this is the case for the circular polarizer. Let's get this out. So this goes into the lens. You gotta pick the lens that you want. So let me turn this on. So we're on the wide, the regular lens. There we, whoop, there's the camera lady. So let's go over here. So it's on there. So now check this out. Let's adjust our exposure first. So right there at an eighth of a second, we've lost a lot, but this is where we can, it's still gonna be slow enough, but now check this out. We're gonna lower this because we're gonna say now we want this reflection gone, all right? So if I rotate this, all right, look at, the, look at the rotation, look at the glare, and now the glare is gone. And now we just have this nice bit right here, which we want for the shot. That did darken it a little bit too, so now we can bring it up half a second, 0.3 seconds. All right, let's adjust our composition a little bit. There we go, look at that take the shot. All right, so I'm gonna get a couple of those and do some exposure bracketing, and then we'll have those to look at. I'm gonna try this um, expert raw thing though to see how the blending compares now that I can actually see what I'm doing. So let's go back in here to expert raw, make sure we're set on the thingies, continuous nine exposures, wide angle, same shot. I'm gonna tilt it up just a hair. Now we're just gonna let the phone do its magic and we're gonna see if that blending looks natural or not. It's not bad, but it doesn't look as, I don't, you know, at first glance. But let's get back to the computer and we'll edit those. And um, also, I think that's about, I'm gonna try for a couple more compositions around here, but it's getting kind of peopley and kind of windy and we're just gonna get the rest of this and we'll see you back on the computer in just a second. So we're back in the studio. Let's jump in and I'm really curious to see 
what I can do with some of those images. I think a couple of them came out pretty good and a couple of them not so much, which is kind of the story of my life with photography. <laughs> That's to be expected, but I am excited about a couple of those and I haven't looked at them yet. So let's just uh, jump right in. Okay, so here's that first image that I did and I'm not even gonna bother messing with this. I mean, it's workable, you know, if we do some things, maybe grab my preset. Um, I don't know, it, it, it's workable, but it's just, it, this is how photography goes. You know, sometimes you take shots and you think it might be cool when you get out there and then sometimes you realize there's just too much going on. You know, it's too wide. This foreground is lost. This is meshed with the foreground. Um, the waterfalls in the shade, we've got this tree going on here. So it's just messy. So we're not even gonna bother with that. But yeah, this again, this is another one that this is kind of a pointless image. Um, that's unfortunate, you know, it just in terms of photography, that one didn't come out so great. Uh, this is with the circular polarizer. We can see we've got the water cut real nice, but 20th of a second isn't very long of, a, of an exposure. So without the NDs and just the circular polarizer, but check this out. There's here's the hack that I was telling you about. All right. So this took the raw and the JPEG in an effort to save time. I'm just going to grab the JPEGs. I'm going to select them all. All right, so I took 36 of these shots. So now I'm just gonna go up here and I'm gonna load them into Photoshop as layers. So you'll notice, see how, see, just notice the individual 15th of a second or 20th of a second, the, the water and the water down here too. Okay, now we got all of them loaded. I'm gonna select them all, convert them to a smart object and then I'm gonna go up here to layer smart objects, stack mode mead, mean. <laughs> All right, now look at that. So that's a huge difference and look how much smoother the water is. Hold on, let me do this real quick. So there's the single 20th of a second image and there's 36 blended. Now you can see the difference that water is a lot smoother, both in the waterfall and all around. So this is what I'm talking about when like, if I were to stack like all of my filters, I could potentially have done this and, you know, done like a, a 20 to 30 second exposure and got that in camera uh, versus doing it in Photoshop like this versus the next thing with all right So here's the JPEG of the same composition with the expert raw mode when I told it to take nine exposures At 20th of a second and it blended them together in the phone uh, And this is the JPEG that it spits out. I haven't done anything to this JPEG Obviously, we can see some color issues here and that's my fault because I, I didn't set I, I had the the white balance in automatic so disregard the color issues and we're just going to look at the water. This is a single 20 second shot and this is, I grabbed nine of them to make it match exactly. So this is nine exposures at 1 20th of a second, also the same. So again, we're going to disregard the color and everything else. Um, but let's just look at the water because this color is super easy to fix. That's not an issue. Uh, let's look at the water. This is the AI uh, expert raw exposure blendy bit. And this is the same amount of exposures with the filters. And I think again, color aside, I think that this is way better. The water is way smoother and you just don't get that same happiness. This would work in a pinch if that's all you had. Uh, and it would be better than, you know, the frozen water and the, you know, the crisp everything. So it is a little bit smoother and it does look okay, but this looks way better. I mean, bam, look at the difference. So that was super easy to fix. And that was like, you know, less than 20 seconds. So I'm not worried about that. And that actually came out pretty decent. But then if you look, that was the nine shots. But if, again, if we look at this one, this looks way better. I mean, there, that's, that's already looking way better. And then we can fix the color of this water real quick.
there. So just a couple quick adjustments. Make that water a nice little bit bluer. We could keep going on this. I'll show you guys the final image later. All right, well, that's enough of the editing. Um, I, I don't think I got as great of compositions, like obviously nothing portfolio worthy or, you know, decent for my standards. Um, I think I just spent a little too much time focusing on the, the video and the technical stuff rather than just being out there looking for compositions if I were to just be, you know, not, not making a video. But that's okay. Uh, for the video, I think that it, it did do a great job of showcasing what the filters can do and how beneficial they can be for you know elevating that level of creativity with the photography with being able to get the slow motion the long exposure stuff and i think that's all really great uh, i love having both the nds and the circular polarizer the circular polarizer is the most important in my mind it's it's definitely the most important filter you can have because you there's a lot of you can emulate nd filters and you can emulate a lot of other filters but you cannot emulate how a circular polarizer cuts through glass or water and you know the sheen of the water cutting through glass from windows that kind of stuff taking the sheen off of shiny rocks and leaves in the forest and all of that you just can't emulate that so that's another just super, you know, if I could only have one filter, it'd be a circular polarizer. And if I could have the best of both worlds, it would be a CPL plus ND built in together. But all of that aside, I just absolutely love the magnetic aspect of the NDs and just how simple they just clicked on there. It made the ease of use just so much better and not having to worry about fitting it over a certain lens, not have to worry about all of this stuff. It just clicks right on and then the quality of them, I've just been really happy with. So they just feel really robust. And I'm really stoked just to have them. Uh, and I'll probably just keep them in the car. Uh, that way I can have like a go-to, you know, grab, quick grab kind of thing if I'm ever out and don't want to hike, you know, with bigger camera gear or whatever. You know, it's just super nice to have that phone kit ready to go knowing that my phone can do so much. All right, I'm going to wrap it up here. Again, huge shout out to Freewell. Uh, and like I said before, this is sponsored and I, I appreciate everything they've done for me, uh, but they did not have any say in this video. They have no idea what I'm making, how I'm making, what I said, and they had no ability to alter the video either. So everything I've said here is my own. Uh, I'm coming from a place of this is something that I personally would use, am using, and will use, and therefore I feel comfortable taking that sponsorship and giving uh, this video for you guys and recommending this kind of stuff. So if you want to check it out, the links are down below for the Freewell stuff. I would definitely look into like their landscape basic kit or like the basic, you know, if you, if they have a kit, I know they have a bunch of different kits because some of that stuff I think for me is a little unnecessary, but you know, the CPL, the NDs, maybe the Pro Mist, you know, stuff like that, the grippy thing, um, all of those are really handy. And also obviously you need the case if you're going to do any of that. So but I think the case comes with their kits. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here because I gotta finish editing this video and then I gotta head out actually to go start on my next trip for my next video. So if you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below. If you like the phone stuff and you wanna learn more about the phone stuff, I have in-depth tutorials on pro mode, expert raw, astro photography, long exposures, all of that. I have all kinds of stuff. You can check out the phone playlists uh, for the S23, S22, all the way back to the S9. But check those out if you want a deep dive on like the pro mode or see how I do the Milky Way or the Astro. All of that good stuff is in my S23 and S22 playlists. And if you want to see some more behind the scenes content and help support the channel uh, and get access to some cool stuff, go check out the channel memberships, the, the links down below, the join button there. That really helps me out a huge amount. I love the community that I'm building there. All right, that's it. I'm really done this time. Hit that like button if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. It's the best thing to do for the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.